everyone welcome back to our channel so today we are going to be doing some weekly food prep and getting some vegetables and stuff ready for this week and i'm also going to be making a dessert but first we're going to take this corn on the cob and i'm going to show you how i shuck that without ever having to really mess with the silks at all so i've got five ears total i'm going to put three of those in the microwave for three minutes and then after that i check them they're not quite ready so i'm going to do an additional two and then you do want to use tongs for this they are extremely hot when they come out of the microwave and then you just cut the end off as you can see there i didn't cut far enough of the end so i ended up having to cut just a little bit more so i can get into the actual cob and once that happens the corn just pulls right out of the silk so again use your tongs because everything is really hot during this process but it slides right out there's no silk there's no problem with that. I do have, I think one ear does have some silk on it here in just a little bit, but it's really nothing compared to what you would have if you hand shucked these yourself. So next I take a jar of these sweet salad peppers and I had several cucumbers left over from last week that I needed to do something with or they were going to go bad. So I took one jar of that, put it in a bowl. I'm going to cut the cucumbers. I do not peel them. You can peel them if you prefer. I just like the peel of a cucumber. So I left those on. I used seven to eight cucumbers in this just to give you an idea of how many I'm doing. I had some pickle juice left over after we were finished with the pickles and I just pour that in there to help cover everything that I'm adding. Now I slice a red onion up and cube that and place that in the bowl. This is a type of summer salad that you can use that is nice to have just on a hot day and you really don't have to have anything with it. You can just make it as a little bowl on the side by itself. Um, this one didn't last no time between us and family. It was gone in just a few days. So next you're gonna see I had a couple turnips so I'm just cutting the ends off of those and I'm going to use my peeler to get the outside skin off. You can call me weird if you like, but I like turnips just in the raw form. I love crunchy vegetables. I am not much on cooked vegetables. So a lot of the prep that I do and that you will see in these videos is just me cutting vegetables in the raw and that's how they typically will be eaten throughout the week. So I had got a seedless watermelon and I'm going to go ahead and cut that up. Now this is how I cut my watermelon. I start from one end and just go all the way across. I start right before you have that center part there on the end and go across until the same distance on the other side. So the ends are still technically holding it together. It's just the middle sections that I'm cutting. And 
and once I've cut it long ways all the way around, then I'll go back and start cutting vertical. What that does is create the wedges of the watermelon. And of course, this is a technique where you would leave the rind on. So after cutting all that up, this is what I'm left with, with leftovers from all the vegetables. We do our own composting and it's here in the backyard. So as you can see, our barrel is made out of a barrel drum and then it just has landscape timbers for the side pieces. And then you have a rod that goes through the drum and sits right in the crook of that allowing you to turn the drum once you've put the food in this one has a slit cut out for the door and then just hinge pieces and a little latch system and then there's holes drilled all throughout and then you've got a couple support beams here as well so we did not make this one this one was actually here when we moved in so this is the style though that I wanted at my previous house and did not make. So the Lord provided me with this one. We've only been here for about a year. And so right now we don't have a whole lot in there, but we're just getting started. It takes years sometimes to get it prepared properly. There is grass clippings in there that we get from our neighbor. Um, he bags his grass, we do not. so. He always throws over some grass clippings. Um, that was some onions. You do have to be careful with onions as they do have a lot uh, aroma. If they are fairly fresh, you will get pest and stuff, but we thankfully have a fenced in yard so we don't really have to worry about that issue. So I do put onions in there. Also, you do not want to put them in their hole because they will actually sprout in your compost and begin to grow. So you don't want that. So I'm just going to dump in our corn and I dumped in our corn, our turnip, our cucumber ends, and a little more onion there. So once that's dumped in, once that's dumped in, I just close the lid. And then you're gonna give it a good spin. You wanna spin this about once a week, if not more. That just keeps everything um, tossed around and evenly distributed. So welcome back to the Loker Kitchen. Today in my process of getting ready for the week, you have seen me cut vegetables. You have seen me get corn on the cob ready. And so to now is onto the dessert. So I'm gonna be making a butterscotch lush. So I'm gonna screenshot the recipe for you and put it there on the screen. So once I put it up, just screenshot your phone and then you'll have the directions and all the ingredients that you will need. There's kind of three steps to this. You're gonna have your cookie crumb bottom then you're gonna have your whip topping layer and then you're gonna have your pudding layer. So it's kind of done in three different steps. 
So for the first step, you're gonna need a full pack of pecan sandies, a six tablespoons of melted butter, which I have not melted yet. So we're gonna put that into the microwave and then a half a cup of flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt this first. I always use stick butter for any of my baking. It just makes it a little bit easier. I keep boxes of the unsalted and the salted on hand. And depending on what I'm making will depend on if I use the salted or the unsalted. So you're gonna pour the whole pack of pecan sandies into the mixer. You can put that in a food processor. Um, we have our Ninja, so I'll be using that today. And we're just gonna pulse that until they are nice and fine. Uh, the Ninja does make short work of this, though if you don't have one, we do use this for many things. I will link it down below if you're interested in looking into purchasing one. those fine enough that you can see that the butter and stuff is just gonna bring that all right back together for a crust this is pretty much the same thing as a like a graham cracker crust you could always pre-purchase one of these you do not have to make it from scratch but with this one I figured why not so we're gonna pour those in We have our half a cup of flour and six tablespoons of melted butter. And I'm just gonna do this by hand. You could always do this in a mixer as well. But I'm just gonna fold it in so you get a little bit of a consistency that it's starting to stick together. The recipe does mention that you can get additional pecans to put on the top of it or even in your pudding mixture. I'm not gonna be doing that. So the only pecans that will be in this is what is in the cookies. All right, so I think our crust is pretty much ready. It's all mixed in, it's moist with the butter and we're gonna go ahead and put it into our baking dish. It requests a nine by 13 lightly greased so I already have that ready we'll just put that in we're just going to spread that around evenly and then once we have it all covered then then we're going to go in and just press it down and that's going to make our our crust you don't have to uh, push it up on the sides or anything like you would with a pie with this you can just keep it level this is a layered type of dessert so just a, um, just a thin square layer is fine. Now that I have this pressed in, my oven has already been on 325, preheating for about five minutes, so it's ready to go. All right, so we're gonna place this in for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna pull that out and let it completely cool before we put any other layer on it. to make sure you look at the clock we are the world's worst around here about putting something in and then we don't look at the clock so we have no idea how long it's been in there all right so for the second step we're going to go ahead and move to the whipped topping for this you're going to want one block of softened cream cheese a cup and a half of powdered sugar and it calls for two cups of whipped cream so we'll just kind of put in um I, I'm, I don't have it measured out so we'll just dollop that in as we go so first step is going to be putting your cream cheese in and beating that till it's soft. So with our KitchenAid mixer that we absolutely adore, we're going to go ahead and start that on low. You're going to want to beat that until it's smooth. We'll also link our KitchenAid below. We use it for many things and it actually has a front attachment area where you can do pastas, um, it, it's just, it's unending. So we'll link that below if you're interested. Okay, now that that's mixed smooth, we're gonna add in our powdered sugar and we're just gonna do this gradually through the mixing process. I'm gonna go ahead 
ahead and put in, I think this um, container actually had about two cups in it. Go ahead and take the crust out, set it on top of the stove, and it has to completely cool before we can put our whipped topping on there. I wish y'all could see him behind the camera. He is so legit, like action. I feel like I need those little clappy things for him. All right, so our crust is cooled off and we have our whipped topping in the, the bowl here. You only put half of this in um, on your crust. Well, because this is real life and we always want to be real with you guys, I will be the first to admit I have made a mistake. So after doing my cream cheese mixture, I realized something was not right and I got to investigating and instead of putting powdered sugar in it, I put cake flour. So it wasn't sweet and it definitely wasn't creamy and whippy. So we're going to take two literally and try this. So we've got our cream cheese back in here again and now we actually have powdered sugar which looks very much like cake flour so please make sure that you always double check that in your kitchen because I know y'all will never make a mistake like I did. So here we go. Let's get the cream cheese whipped back up. And we're going to whip it until it's smooth which it's pretty much already smooth. Um, we went ahead and softened it again. We're just going to add the powdered sugar a little at a time gradually. See, that looks so much better. If you're used to making cream cheese icing, you know this is what I should have had the first time. Go ahead and blend in the rest of the cream. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead and blend in the rest of the sugar. And you're going to want that creamy, smooth consistency, just like that. Now that we have the cream cheese and the powdered sugar mixed up, we're going to put in our whipped cream. This is completely softened, so it's very easy to get out. It doesn't take that long to get the whipped cream and the cream cheese mixed together. So now that we have that done, we're going to spread that onto our crust and then we'll be on to the next step, which will be the pudding. So for the last step, we're going to make our pudding mixture. You're going to need three and one fourth cup of cold milk. And we have 1%. That's what we drink here. So that's what we're going to use. You can use any percent you need. And then two boxes of instant pudding. Again, I've got butterscotch because that's what it calls for. And that's what I like. But you can probably use this for any flavor that you want. We're going to pour our dry pudding in. And then we're gonna pour our milk in slowly. Just so it doesn't splatter. All right, so now our pudding is done mixing. So we are gonna go ahead and put it on top of our whipped cream mixture. This should be just like instant pudding. It should be enough that you can just pour it out. Scrape the pan. I will link one of our other desserts up above and you can definitely check that out if you have not. That one includes some fresh fruit 
that's in season right now, which is a great summertime dessert. This is also a good one to take for like family get togethers. It's just, it feeds a lot and it's really not that expensive to make. Things don't always go the way that you think they would. You don't always have that picturesque TV show recipe that happens. There's plenty of Pinterest fails that I'm sure that happen every day. Always be kind to yourself. Just trying something new is always worth it. So here we go, the finished product. This is our Butterscotch Lush Cream Dessert. So it wasn't that hard, even with a mess up. It wasn't bad, so I thank y'all for joining us for this video of weekly prep. Remember to subscribe, like, share, always comment. If you have dessert ideas or meal ideas you'd like us to try, definitely do that. Me and Mike are always up for a challenge, so thank you for joining us, and we will see you in the next one.